Uh, welcome everybody to this next installment of the Masters of 504 Lending Series um, hosted by Mountain West. We really appreciate your involvement and in all that you do um, for our little company. Um, it's always been a pleasure to work with each and every one of you and uh, to have this partnership in small business lending and helping out those small business owners in our community. Uh, today, uh, we're going to be instructed by Kimberly Holly and Olivia Leishman. Uh, they're going to kind of overview and talk about other loan products that Mountain West has to offer and other kind of gap financing and available capital that can be accessed through Mountain West and other programs that we partner with. So um, with that, we'll turn it over to them. This is being recorded and we will disseminate the information in the, the recording after it's over. Um, I'll be monitoring the uh, chat box or the Q&A box. So if anyone has any questions, please pop that in there and I can relay it to our presenters so that they can address those questions. And with that, we'll turn it over to Kimberly and Olivia. Hello, everyone. Thanks for joining us today. Um, we are excited to have a quick, short and sweet discussion with you about some of the non-504 things that we were able to offer. Obviously, the 504 will always be our main priority, um, but we're excited to have some other options for you. Um, so I'll let Kim take it away. Good morning, everybody. Um, today, we're going to talk about our non-504 products. Um, pretty much we have these products so that they can be a tool for you. Um, so if there's a loan that's outside of your box that you can't do, that we can come in and do that and you not lose your deposit relationship with that, with that borrower um, since we're a non-depository lender. Um, so we're going to talk about our SBA Community Advantage program, um, the eligibility requirements and terms, the Utah Small Business Loan Fund, and some of the other resources that we have available. So let me set the scene for you. Um, you have a growing relationship with a small business that's looking for capital, but they fall just outside your credit box. This could be a collateral shortfall. They may have home equity, but just not enough. Or maybe one of their biggest assets is inventory, accounts receivable, something that's a little trickier to evaluate. Um, they may have an SBSS score that's just outside your policy or guidelines, or they're just still in that in-between growth phase between bootstrapping and being completely bankable. Um, Mountain West may have an option for you. Um, and like Kim said, uh, we're gonna cover these today. The uh, this solution could be one of our specialty products or resources. This is not an all-encompassing list. Um, we're, we love working with community, other community lenders and resources to help small businesses grow. Um, but just some of those things, Community Advantage Loan, our partnership with Utah Small Business Loan Fund, and then referral resources. So um, we know a lot of banks internally have resources to help get those businesses working on their financials, things like that. Um, but if not, we, we have connections with those and we participate in a lot of events that really support businesses in that growing phase. So we really want to just uh, be a solution for that little hole in the financing uh, chain of the chain of financing. Um, so we want you to look at us as a backup option for some of these. Um, the SBA uh, found that there was a gap in the market um, that was underserved and they decided to create this program. Um, pretty much it's before um, your, your borrower is truly bankable um, and after they've used all of the friends, family, um, hard money, um, micro lenders, etc. And this is kind of filling that gap in the middle. Um, this program has been extended to September 2024, but there are talks about making this more of a permanent program. So we look forward to maybe some of the changes that are coming. Um, we had two major updates in 2022 to make this a more accessible program. So we're looking forward to seeing, you know, how the SBA tackles that and really works to make those small 7A loans more of a priority like we've all heard about. 
So kind of what we're looking for um, with your clients are we can do startup businesses, um, deals that you can't get done that are just outside of your credit box, but are still a good deal. Um, and we can lend uh, statewide with Community Advantage in Utah, Wyoming, and now Colorado. Um, eligible uses, we can do debt refinance, uh, working capital, inventory purchase, equipment, partner buyout, um, you know, kind of everything that a 7A, um, a traditional 7A can do can be included in the Community Advantage. And the startup businesses are new to us. If you've been familiar with our small loan programs in the past, usually we haven't been able to look at these, but um, once again, we're really trying to, uh, you know, be guided by the SBA in actually making this an accessible backup option for those 70 borrowers that you cannot help quite yet. Um, Community Advantage for debt refi follows the same guidelines and requirements as the typical 70 refinances. Um, so it cannot be used to pay a creditor in a position to sustain a loss. So transferring that bad debt to the SBA, trying to put that off on another party, um, that won't fly. Um, one of the reasons, one of the eligible reasons is it no longer meets the needs of the applicant. Really the only place we see this is with revolving loans versus term loans. Um, that's you can't just like normal 7a we can't just put that on any community advantage loan um and use that as our main reason unless it really does show that um the revolving loan is not good for the business right now and then it also still needs to meet the sba 10 percent improvement to debt service co debt service coverage requirements unless you're using the no longer meets the needs of the applicant um the line of credit versus term loan Um, terms are up to 10 years. We can go uh, 50,000 up to 350,000. That was just a new change. It used to be 250. Um, it is a variable rate based on um, prime plus, uh, plus a spread depending on the credit, um, the whole collateral credit package of the borrowers, how we determine what that plus is. Um, we have flexible collateral requirements as we um, don't have to be fully collateralized um, for those loans over 100,000 to uh, 350,000. So we are a little more flexible with that because we go by SBA guidelines um, and there's no prepayment penalty. Um, you can reach out to any of us, any of the loan officers here um, to refer a client. Um, new changes have been coming in this year and we ex expect some more, some more great changes um, and hopefully the program will turn to a permanent loan program eventually. Um, and if our programs and your programs aren't quite a right fit for your borrowers, uh, we do have some other um, places that we can refer them to or loan programs that we partner with. Um, including SBA, the microloan, um, the Women's Business Center, the Small Business Development Center. Yeah, a lot of the, these clients I'm sure you've seen too, they're in that growth phase where they just might need some outside resources. So we, like I said, we love partnering with other, um, other organizations that prioritize that so we can help get them ready for bank financing um, and the best option. So we're also working on, I feel like our internal systems a little bit. We've made some recent changes to really help get these going with the rising interest rates. It's been a concern for business owners. So um, we wanna make that a, a good option for people. Um, quick question coming from the group that I think is applicable to discuss right now. Um, lenders wanna know what the typical interest rate range is currently, like prime plus, what are we kind of seeing right now? Um, the, the maximum ranges are on the SBA's website. That's based on amount. For ours, typically, we're seeing a margin of between two and four. We really want to keep it a competitive product. So based on the overall picture, um, I, I mostly see between two and three right now. We hope to stay consistent with that for our margin. Thanks. Can I go over requirements? 
Oh yes, sorry. <laughs> You're good. <laughs> um, requirements we do. Um, these uh, 7A loans have the scoring system, which I'm sure several of you are familiar with. Um, but our minimum can go down to 140. So if you have someone that scores um, lower than your requirements, your internal requirements, we can go down to 140. So we have a little more flexibility there with, um, with the SBSS score. Um, equity injection, we do require 10% for a startup that's in business for less than a year. Um, collateral, we will take a blanket UCC lane on all fi uh, the fixed assets of the business. Um, and any equipment that we purchase with loan proceeds, we of course will want a first lien position on that equipment. Um, real estate, uh, personal residence isn't always required and also life insurance isn't always required. Um, those are both on a case by case basis. Yeah. And that's one thing that SBA has brought up again recently, too, is to really reiterate that personal residence does not need to be taken in every scenario. So that is great news. Um, we're so thankful for our partnership with the Utah Small Business Loan Fund um, throughout 2020 and 2021. We um, had a great experience with them helping get their um, EDA a revolving loan fund up and going for businesses that had specifically been impacted by COVID-19. And ongoing, they have funds from a few different sources. Um, so these requirements and uses here are kind of general. Some of the funds um, that they have, the pools of funds, do have more specific requirements. Um, but we always love to chat with a business and um, you guys and see if there is one of those pools that they can fit into. Um, so the clients, they're looking for those. This one, they... Uh, they are looking for businesses that are two years or older. They need to be located in Utah. Um, some of those pools of funds do have more restrictive location requirements. Um, and also still we're looking for um, companies that are not quite bankable yet, have a shortfall in one other area, whether that's collateral, um, uh, credit history, just things like that. They're just not um, quite to a bank loan yet. Um, the uses for these ones are working capital, real estate purchase, equipment, debt refinance. This is a fixed rate uh, term loan. Typically, I see between five and 10 years for these ones, um, but it's a great organization to work with. If you go to their website, they have some awesome client features on projects we've done. Um, we've been able to help on a couple of 504 deals where the banker and our hands were completely tied on it. Utah Small Business Loan Fund has been able to be kind of a flexible gap financing resource. So it's always worth talking to us about and just seeing if there's anything available in any of these funds that we're connected with. Definitely. Um, and I'll go through some of these examples and then Kim can speak on it too with the experience with the 504 loans. Um, because we have more flexible collateral requirements on these, we've been able to help businesses across a wide variety of industries. Um, this has been recognized by EDA that um, this fund has really reached the intended purposes. So a couple of businesses that we were able to help were a winter sports startup. This was a highly seasonal company that um, just wasn't quite warm enough of a deal for a bank to help with. Um, they really needed a bulk inventory purchase. And throughout getting a whole encompassing picture of their business, we were able to decide that um, based on their seasonality, the investors that were behind them, that they would soon be to that bankable phase. And we really wanted to be a part of the project early. So we were able to step in there. Um, we've helped a couple of small manufacturers with equipment, um, software and tech development with working capital. Again, all of these businesses showed um, either an impact of COVID, um, collateral shortfall, something that was outside of bank guidelines that we were able to step in and help with. And we have uh, these new borrower spotlights on our YouTube page. So I encourage you guys to also go check those out. There's some 504 projects on there and then um, a project to be able to help out with one of these small funds. So it's awesome. Yes. And um, these small loan funds um, and community advantage can be used in conjunction with the 504, um, whether it be a refinance um, of some seller debt used to purchase the business um, or replenishing some working capital um, or needing some more working capital to grow the project in this new location that they are purchasing. 
Um, so it really can be a companion and add to the 504 project as well. Um, here's some more of our resources that we have connections with. Uh, Six County Association of Governments. Um, they also have a similar revolving loan fund to the Utah Small Business Loan Fund. Um, Utah Micro Loan Fund is great. They can go up to 50,000 and they have a high concentration of startup businesses as well. Um, Women's Entrepreneurial Conference, we are involved in that and they have a grant competition um, to give uh, give grants to women businesses. Uh, Kiva is um, housed at the Women's Business Center and it is a small loan. Uh, it's kind of a crowdfunded zero interest loan up to 15,000, which is also a good startup um, resource. Uh, Goldman Sachs 10,000 Small Business um, is a great education program for business owners and it is free. There's an application process, but it is, it is definitely a high quality program that gives a lot of, of um, value to your business owners. And then of course the Women's Business Center and the Small Business Development Center who help borrowers with their business plans, with their financials, get their businesses either going or um, continuing to grow. Um, so we really like those partnerships um, and, and they benefit us and your small business borrowers. Okay, community advantage pop quiz. There was one more thing too about community advantage that I wanted to mention is the scoring system. Um, we do, we are still guided by SBN, the fact that we still do an underwrite in addition to the SBSS score. I forgot to mention that and just wanted to throw that in there is we do still do that thorough underwrite and make sure they do have the ability to repay it. Um, so it's the best case for them. We don't want them to put them in a worse situation with this loan product. So I just wanted to throw that in there, but um, can anyone guess what's the minimum loan amount for Community Advantage? And we'll send you some type of prize. <laughs> it's a surprise prize. So you can just put it, <laughs> yeah. put it in the comments. Put it in the comments, yeah. And Danny will let us know um, who, who answered first. Danny, you're on mute. Of course I am. <laughs> tell me what the answer is first, and then I'll tell you who got it right. 50,000. Okay, your first person, the winner is Greg Brandt. Thanks, Greg. Way to go. Maximum? What's the maximum loan amount? First person to get that right has a handle of Z-K-A-I-F-T-K. Way to go, ZK. A I F T or L T K. <laughs> Woo, that was 300. We'll have them uh, put in the comments their name so that we can get the <laughs> yes. prize out. Yes. Put your, put your comments in the name. Uh, if you want, a, want the pri a prize, you put your name in there so that we can get it to you. Yeah. The minimum SBSS score requirement for community advantage. Okay, Brett Healy is the person that got the other one. Uh, John Holt got the minimum SBSS score correct. Okay, there you go. Awesome. Good job, John. And then is there a life insurance requirement on these? And Austin Demick with an It Depends, the classic economics answer. <laughs> Perfect. Great. <laughs> that is the perfect answer, <laughs> especially in SBA lending. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Thank you guys again for joining us today to talk about some of our other loan products. It's always just worth a shot. It kind of depends um, throughout the year, maybe what we have available with our partners in lending. Um, but it's always worth reaching out to us just to see if we can help in some way. Um, so here's our contact info. Um, feel free to call us to chat anything through or just send clients directly over um, and we can kind of take it from there and chat with them and see if there's any options we have or get them um, with somebody who does have more options.
questions? Okay, it doesn't look like we have any outstanding questions here. We answered a couple of them live. Um, thank you so much to Kimberly and Olivia for preparing this um, source content for us and for presenting today. Like I said, we'll be sending this out and posting it on our YouTube channel. I do just want, and and Kimberly and Olivia did a great job of, of really driving this home, and I just want to do one last thing, is we want to be make it abundantly aware that on all of these loan products, we are not a competitor to our third party lenders, our credit unions and our banks. Like this is a loan product that is offered through Mountain West by the SBA, USBLF, and, and, um, and that partnership purely to take care of those deals that are non-bankable, that they are people that just miss the mark outside of a deal that you can do and rather than refer it to a competitor, um, a depository lender, like this is just a way for us to enhance what we can provide to our lenders. Um, also, it can be used as a companion to any 504 project out there that just needs a little working capital boost after their injection. They need to cover a franchise fee, et cetera. So just really want to drive that home that um, our lenders are our top priority, and these are purely um, credit facilities that we offer to enhance our lenders' abilities to get deals done and to help out small businesses. So just really kind of want to drive that home there. Uh, thank you again to all that participated, uh, and once again, a big thank you to Kimberly and Olivia, and we hope you have a great rest of your day and a great weekend.